Maserati Levant Review Our Rating 3 Star The Levant is Maserati's first SUV. Competitively priced and practical enough, it should open the brand up to a new group of buyers. 4. Smooth, refined performance, practical enough, decent standard equipment. Against Interior quality, only one engine option in UK, expensive option packs. The Levant is a good first attempt at an upmarket SUV from Maserati. It's competitively priced and practical enough, which should open the brand up to a new group of buyers. But it's neither supremely comfortable nor is it particularly sporty. Quality issues inside also mean it can't compete with its German rivals. There's only one diesel model to choose from, though for some the Maserati badge alone will be enough. Our choice. Maserati Levant 3.0 V6 Diesel with Luxury Package When you think of Italian car brands, subs don't often spring to mind especially among makers known for their sportier models, such as Maserati. However, 4X4S are showing no signs of dipping in popularity, so Maserati has added one to its lineup in the shape of the Levant. Buyers get the option of just one diesel engine and a single 8-speed automatic gearbox, though Ferrari-tuned petrol models are on their way. There is only one standard specification for the Levant, though option packs can be added boasting a long list of extras for a sizable outlay. The 2,450 pounds driver assistance pack plus, for example, adds adaptive cruise control, forward collision and lane departure warning, blind spot alert and rear cross traffic alert. The luxury package features heated seats, four zone climate control, larger wheels, better leather and an easy entry slash exit system for the electric seats and steering wheel but costs 7,130 pounds. It's hard to pinpoint a direct rival for the Maserati Levant, though the Porsche KN runs it close on size and price. Despite its bulky dimensions, the Italian SUV is only available with five seats, though space in the back is pretty good. The Audi Q7 offers seven seats with the rearmost row folding electrically into the boot floor. The Q7 beats the Levant for quality, too with Maserati's tech-filled touchscreen let down by substandard materials and flimsy buttons. For some, the idea of an SUV with the Maserati badge is sacrilege, but for others, it'll be exactly what they've been waiting for. Engines, Performance, and Drive 3.9 Star The Maserati Levant is fast enough, though it's a shame there's no super-quick GTS to give the Porsche KN Turbo a real run for its money. There's only one engine in the UK a 3.0-liter turbo diesel. It's responsive in sport mode, and even sounds pretty good thanks to the deep verbal piped into the cabin to enhance the exhaust note. However, the Levant feels strained when you rev it out. Thanks to the portly 2,205 kg curb weight, you have to stretch the engine beyond its comfort zone to maximize performance. It'll do 0 to 62 miles per hour in a reasonable 6.9 seconds, which is 4 tenths faster than a Porsche KN diesel. With 600 Nm of torque there's enough performance on tap for overtaking maneuvers. The trouble is, the gearbox kicks down too easily and while the shifts are smooth, even in sport mode using the paddles they're not as fast as you'll find on a KN's PDK transmission. Sport mode also firms up the damping, but the standard air suspension still struggles to contain the big body and the wheels thump over bad roads. Leave it in the default mode and let the engine and gearbox do their thing, and the Levant makes much more sense. It's a competent cruiser when left to its own devices, with a more supple, refined ride. Not many owners will take their Levant off-road and while the air suspension can be raised to improve ground clearance, it's more impressive that, at speed, the car lowers itself to aid aerodynamics and efficiency. Engines While European buyers also get the option of two Ferrari-built V6 turbo petrols, here in the UK the 271BHP 3.0-liter V6 diesel is the only choice. That's no bad thing, though, because the engine hooked up to an 8-speed automatic gearbox is smooth and delivers strong, 
relatively refined performance. It'll do 0 to 62 miles per hour in 6.9 seconds, and hit 143 miles per hour flat out. It's responsive enough, and outsprints the excellent Porsche KN diesel. It's a shame there's no super quick GTS model, but chances are Maserati will see fit to sell one here at a later date. MPG, CO2 and running costs. 3.6 star. The Maserati Levant is only available with a V6 diesel engine, helping keep costs down. Forthcoming petrol cars will be more expensive to run. A few years ago, the idea of a diesel-powered Maserati would have sent shivers down the spine of Italian enthusiasts. The same could have been said of a Trident-badged SUV, in fact. But now you can get both, in one package. Before the Ferrari-tweaked petrol models arrive, the Levant diesel is the only model you can buy. As a result, owners shouldn't suffer too badly at the pumps with official combined fuel economy of 39.2 mpg. However, during our extensive week-long road test we achieved only 29.2 mpg. That compares with the Porsche KN diesel's more impressive 33.2 mpg, and means owners covering 12,000 miles will spend around 260 pounds more a year on fuel. Higher emissions than the KN at 189g slash km mean road tax costs 270 pounds per year, 60 pounds more than the Porsche, but the CO2 output will have a bigger impact on business users. It pushes the Maserati into the 37 percenter benefit in kind bracket, compared with 34 percenter for the Porsche. At its higher purchase price, and top rate fleet users will pay nearly £8,000 per year to run the Levant, or £793 more than those choosing the KN. Insurance Groups Maserati hasn't revealed insurance groups for the Levant SUV yet. However, given the prestige badge and powerful diesel engine, premiums are likely to be high. For comparison, a like-for-like like Porsche KN diesel sits in Group 45 just five groups shy of the most expensive Turbo S variant. Depreciation Maserati is predicting strong residual values for its first SUV. No matter which spec you go for, official data suggests it'll hold on to more than 50% of its value after 3 years and 36,000 miles. That's around the same as an entry-level Porsche KN, though higher spec, and more expensive, models, will lose more value over the same period of time. An Audi Q7 retains closer to 40 percenter. Interior, design, and technology. 3.8 star. Despite arriving in 2016, the Levant's cabin feels dated and not that well built. The touch screen is versatile, but kit is expensive. The Maserati Levant shares much of its makeup with the firm's Ghibli and Quattro Port saloons, both of which made their debuts in 2013. As a result, the platform is fairly fresh and employs a blend of steel and aluminium for strength and to save weight where possible, including the bonnet, doors, and bootlet. This also has big implications for safety, so there's a large amount of strengthening to reinforce the body, but Maserati has still managed to keep the Levant's weight distribution at a perfect 50-50 split. There are aluminium suspension components for better control, too, so on paper it's got what it takes to match the Porsche KN for on-road ability. As you climb up into the cabin, the design follows the underpinnings by echoing Maserati saloons, with a centrally mounted 8.4-inch touchscreen infotainment system flanked by a pair of air vents. There's an analog clock above this, while the wide transmission tunnel comes covered in glossy trim. The rest of the cabin is lined with soft leather, and feels plush and comfortable to sit in. The 7,130 pounds luxury package adds heated seats, for zone climate control, larger wheels, better leather, and an easy entry-slash-exit system for the electric seats and steering wheel. If you want heated seats but don't fancy stumping up for the luxury package, then you'll have to pay £370. SAT NAV, Stereo and Infotainment 
The Levant uses a similar infotainment system to that found in other cars under the Fiat Chrysler automobile's umbrella, including some Jeeps and Fiats. While it's been reskined for Maserati it's not as good as rival set UPS from Porsche, BMW, or Audi. Apart from the climate control, everything can be controlled from the touch screen, with downloadable apps available alongside features such as internet radio. DAB and SAT NAV are standard. The upgraded AHA function brings compatibility with most smartphones, with iPhone users able to use Siri voice control. While the basic tech is there, the system isn't the most logical, so you often find yourself fishing around for the right option. Given the capacitive touchscreen strength, the rotary controller underneath seems redundant, too. Still, the optional stereos are worth a mention. The regular Hi-Fi can be upgraded to a 1,280 pounds Harman slash Cardin unit, but the 3,360 pounds Bowers and Wilkins system is among the best in the business. Practicality, comfort, and boot space. 4.1 star. The Maserati Levant is a deceptively big car, but with only five seats it can't rival cars like the Audi Q7 for versatility. While the Maserati Levant is a natural rival for the Porsche Cayenne on price and has bigger external dimensions, in terms of practicality it's closer to the smaller Porsche Macan SUV. The 580-liter boot is 90 liters down on the Cayennes, and thanks to the raised ride height you have to lift bags high to get them past the bumper. This is helped by the easy entry system that drops the suspension by 45 mm to its lowest setting, but in reality few owners will take the time to use this feature on a regular basis. Inside, despite the big center console, storage is acceptable, with a tray in front of the gear lever, two cup holders adjacent to it and a big, lidded storage area in between the front seats. Size Despite its coupe-like styling, the Levant is actually 18 cm longer and 3 cm wider than a Porsche Cayenne. With only five seats, it's more comparable to the Porsche than something like an Audi Q7 though in terms of sheer size, it's not much smaller. Legroom, headroom and passenger space. Space in the back of the Maserati Levant is generous, and there's plenty of room for two adults with generous head and legroom. Sitting three abreast might be a bit of a squeeze, but it's certainly possible for shorter journeys. There's no seven-seat version either, meaning rivals like the BMW X5 and Audi Q7 have the edge when it comes to outright passenger space. Boot The Levant's boot is a decent size, but is more comparable with cars like the BMW X3 than the larger X5. The 580-liter load bay is 70 liters smaller than the X5, and 190 liters shy of the cavernous Audi Q7. The load lip is a little high, but no worse than it is in rival models, while the standard fit-powered tailgate is a useful touch. The rear seats split fold 60 colon 40 to reveal a big, but undisclosed, load area, meaning the Levant could prove useful for the occasional trip to the tip. Reliability and safety. 3.5 star. Build quality isn't as good as you might expect, with the Levant's German rivals beating it hands down for fit and finish. Maserati has big sales ambitions for the Levant, with the SUV set to open the brand up to more customers, but this is still a low-volume manufacturer in the UK so it didn't feature in our most recent annual driver power owner satisfaction survey. Build quality is fine, but some way off rivals from Porsche or Audi. The car should be safe, though. Euro NCAP hasn't crash tested it, but the Levant gets six airbags, while the 2,450 pounds driver assistance pack plus adds adaptive cruise, forward collision, and lane departure warning, blind spot and rear cross traffic alert. Warranty The Maserati Levant's three-year, unlimited mileage warranty is competitive, and beats the Audi Q7s three-year slash 60,000 mile guarantee. Porsche, BMW, and Mercedes all offer the same setup and according to historical data are likely to suffer fewer niggles during the first few years. Servicing 
Maserati offers fixed price servicing from £599, as well as three-year servicing packages from around £1,500. Service intervals of 12 months or 12,500 miles mean you'll be visiting your dealer fairly regularly, though at the time of writing there were only 19 dealers in the UK meaning getting your car there might prove troublesome.